Um, hello, guys. Uh, so sorry we're late by uh, just a couple of points, but basically I started doing my laundry, and um, that's when I realized that oh, the match is going already, and I'm only turning on the stream right now. I see we already have our resident Monfils fan in the chat. Welcome to you. Um, he says that it sounds like a comfortable win for the goat. We'll find out. Obviously, this would be quite a quite a big thing for Monfils to beat Medvedev right now. I don't think it's impossible. Definitely, Medvedev is also one of the players to watch during this clay swing to sort of see if he follows up on that insane, on these insane achievements that he had last year, especially winning Rome. But even in Monte Carlo, you know, he beats Zverev in the third round. He does. He doesn't have much energy for the quarters. But like, yeah, that was a perfectly serviceable result, and I think he'd be happy to achieve the same or maybe even more this year. We are starting, or at least I'm starting to watch the match in this forty fifteen point with a very long rally. Kind of expecting plenty of them today, mostly trading backhands cross court. Medvedev finds the line, forces Monfils to slice, but then isn't able to capitalize. So it's going to be the first game for Gaal. It was kind of very med non-Medvedev type play, where like he gets that slice and he simply steps around for an inside in forehand, uh, which with his technique is kind of tough. So I'm not surprised he missed it on court Rainier the third here. Gaal starting with a hold. Welcome to everybody. We obviously had a watch along just now for Sinner Korda as well, which um, ended up being a bit of a demolition job by the young Italian with eventually a 6 1 6 to win. I was doing that much with James, of course. Um, around the other sort of courts at the Monte Carlo venue, by the way, in the meantime, we've had a very easy win for Stefanos Tsitsipas. 6-1, six, 6 love, 12 games in a row over Tomas Martin Echeverri. I did not watch it since we were doing Sinner Corta. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Tsitsipas is going to play Zverev tomorrow and it's a pretty huge match for him, definitely. To get back on track, he needs to be beating guys like that. In the meantime, also Hugo Umber managed to clinch that match against Zizhen Zhang. Lovely stuff from Umber, honestly, only losing five games. That's pretty insane. And uh, at the same time, we also have Hubert Hurkacz playing against Roberto Bautista Agut, currently 7-5, love one, but on serve. Hurkacz, of course, on a five-match clay winning streak after Estori last week. We'll see how he holds up physically. Yesterday, there were some dips against Jack Draper. Yes, absolutely. But he managed to handle all of that. And so far, he's also handling Roberto Bautista Agut. Some big serving for Medvedev. Monfils standing, of course, quite far behind the baseline, but that's not really giving him much so far as these few returns here go way out of the court. Medvedev not finding that ace, even though he thought I think he did. And it's actually going to be a double fault, but again, at 40 love, maybe that's not the most important thing in the world. We'll see. And that's basically it uh, when it comes to the lead up. Of course, we will also talk about the head to head between the two guys. They've had a few encounters already. Another big serve for Medvedev. And I guess that Monfils has landed that return on the baseline. So that actually gives him the chance to work his way into the point here. Medvedev with a backhand drop shot, though. Gael should catch it, but he won't get it over the net. One game all. So when it comes to the rivalry, we uh, actually have had three matches between them. 2019, Sofia Medvedev wins 6-2, 6-4 in the semifinals. Then the semifinal of Rotterdam, the very same year, the very same month even. Monfils wins in three sets, also the semifinals. And then in 2022, they also played in Indian Wells. Third round, Monfils wins from a set down. So they haven't played in clay. They also haven't played in over two years. So it feels like it's definitely a bit of a new chapter in the rivalry, and uh, there's no telling of what might happen today. Um, when it comes to Daniel, I know he's not maybe associated with clay courts the most, but he's had some fine results in Monte Carlo. Actually only playing it for the second time since 2019, well, 
let's say for yeah for the second time since 2019 today 2019 he he beat Djokovic that was one of like his first breakthrough standout big wins and he managed to beat him in the quarters also beat Tsitsipas that event and lost to Lajovic in the semis whereas in 2023 he went made as I said earlier he beat Zverev in the third round very memorable match and then lost to Holger Rune Monfils surprising him here with the with the drop shot Medvedev is going to be able to catch it but it's just an easy put away for Kyle Definitely a bit of, um, I don't even want to say rust, but like, you know, some early slow rhythm for both players. Medvedev missing this return here, even though there was absolutely no um, reason to do it, honestly. But uh, these things will probably get better for both guys with time. Once again, trading backhands seems like both guys are very comfortable in this area so far. It's actually Monfis who, who switches up first and it's going to be Daniel's forehand that produces the error. And when it comes to Monfis and his Monte Carlo history, of course, he actually hasn't played this tournament since 2016, which is pretty shocking. But uh, yeah, the last few years, he's kind of had shortened clay court seasons that, you know, sometimes injuries, sometimes just coming back from injury and stuff. So it's actually been eight years since he played this event last. And when he played it last, he made the final. Back in 2016, defeating Tsonga on the way, that was probably the main win. He actually didn't drop a set on the way to the final as well, eventually losing to Rafael Nadal, but that was very, very high quality match for two sets until he ran out of steam. I didn't know that he hadn't played Monte Carlo since 2016. That's very interesting. Another forehand error from for Medvedev and it's Monfils going 2-1 up. Uh, when it comes to some other big results for Monfils, only really one massive run in Indian well, in Monte Carlo in the past, which was actually the year before his final in 2016. In 2015, he beat Federer in the third round, then Dimitrov in the quarterfinals before losing to Berdik in the semis. Actually, a pretty easy loss to Thomas, I would say, on clay that was probably a little disappointing for Gael. But uh, yeah, his head to head with Monfils, uh, with Berdik wasn't that great. I think it was a 4 1 maybe for the check. And the, but the only win that um, Gael got was at the French Open. So that definitely had to taste a little better because of that. No, it's 6 1, sorry, not, not 4 1. Yeah, 6 1. Uh, even so, yeah, he was getting outplayed by Berdik most of the time. So far, not getting outplayed by Daniel Medvedev. As you guys might know, Mohamed Layani, by the way, on our screens, putting on a jumper. So it seems like it's getting colder in Monte Carlo. When it comes to um, Monfils, um, as you guys might know, me and John were in Estoril last week. So we did watch him live there. He did not do amazing, but he was okay. He won a match right away against um, Andy Carrocha, which was a very entertaining affair. I think the Portuguese wildcard did uh, perform extremely well there to sort of keep pushing Monfils for the entire probably two-hour match. I would have to check, but I think the sets were very, very long. And then against Marton Fucevic, Monfils just had a really easy path to win at some point. I mean, he had three match points on the Fucevic serve, but... The aggressive forehands that Martin was hitting under pressure were pretty incredible. Uh, probably also on Monfils, you know, on sort of bucking down even more, just standing two, three meters behind the baseline and hoping for an error. Of course, that's a large part of his game as well, like waiting out his opponents. You know, a lot of the time he plays like this. But um, yeah, in this particular case, it felt like maybe he got even more passive and defensive as he um as the match was coming to an end and he paid the ultimate price because soon enough it was actually Fucevic winning 7-5 there's some talk with Layani here as Monfils does not want to keep playing is that rain what is that actually um let me maybe check twitter because I'm see watching on mute 
given we're doing this. But I'm not sure yet what's happening there. But no, we're back. Daniel Medvedev serving it one, two down. Let's see. And I just said that Monfils, you know, a big part of his game is like kind of waiting people around, waiting people out. That's the same for Medvedev, of course, which might lead to quite a high number of longer rallies in this one. Probably quite a lot of rallies where neither player is like very keen on taking initiative either. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, we are expecting a better match than Korda, the sinner, definitely, because that was just, you know, he got walloped. In the meantime, Roberto Bautista Good broke Hubert Hurkacz, I think, for the first time this match in the second set. However, now the Paul has a break point. So he might not allow the Spaniard to consolidate if he wins the point. Definitely quite an interesting tussle in that both might have some physical issues if they keep going like this, you know, at that sort of pace. Because Hurkacz is coming off a title and Bautista Gut as well. Nearing the end of his career, not exactly at his physical peak. Great forehand angle from Medvedev here. Uses that shovel backhand, but everything is coming back from Monfils. When we were in Estoril, his opponent, Martin Fuchovic, said that Monfils was like a wall in the first set, and that sort of forced him to just start going for broke. And so far, we're definitely seeing it in this match. But eventually, it's Kyle who, went for, went, who goes for this like weird drop shot attempt. And uh, Medvedev just easily picks it off. That was a surprising idea, I would say. Maybe that was the point, but it definitely did not work out. And that was uh, quite an effort to even stay in the point from Monfils earlier. And now he mishits that forehand return, just absolutely out of nowhere on the second serve kick. Both guys have made a few errors like this right now, which of course in their cases, I would say they are more painful because you know they're staying, they're staying so far back that you kind of have to make your returns if you're if that's your court positioning monfis picking that ball with a forehand slice now a backhand slice defending against the flat ground strokes of medvedev will he sort of find his chance no it's medvedev who just slams this backhand down the line here what a great shot from the russian and it's going to be two, be two games all now That was a really lovely point for Medvedev. I think there was one backhand where maybe Monfils could have done a lot more. Instead, he just gifted the ball to Medvedev once again after surviving the early attacks and just got burned by this insane shot down the line. So still status quo, two games all. Monfils on the plus one forehand, has the control over the point, delays the stroke here but misses the kill shot. I think delaying the stroke was a nice idea. He definitely got sort of the chance to play where Medvedev wasn't going because he saw that he was covering his forehand corner, switched it up to the backhand, but maybe that slight, I can't even say indecisiveness, but maybe he just delayed the stroke to a point where it got tricky for him. The next plus one forehand does the trick though. Both guys definitely getting quite a lot out of their serves so far. Neither is like maybe the most capable at taking whatever the first their first serves give them, but they will of course be earning they will be earning points like this no matter what. 
now my Monfis kind of snaps on this plus one forehand here. This is a game so far that's been kind of decided by this shot from Gael. Win or lose. And if not the plus one forehand, then at least the first two free forehands in the point. In fact, I don't think he's hit a backhand in this game so far. And he's 1540 down because even though he had control over the shot, Medvedev just neutralizes the point of this moon ball. Monfils tries to slice, uh, sorry, slice, tries to smash, but he dumps it into the middle of the net. So it's two breakpoints for Medvedev already. And let's see. Another first serve is in. Now he's actually going to have to hit a backhand, Monfils. Trying to wait out Medvedev here. Adding quite a lot of spin on these backhands cross. Not much that, that Daniel can do of such a ball with his forehand. So we are back to sort of just patiently trading shots cross. Monf is preferring the down the line direction on his forehand a little bit more. Still going. It's probably about 20 shots by now. Backhand down the line from Monfils as he misses. N wasn't even like fully taking risk here, you know. He, I, I think if he maybe got into the ball a bit more, came up like one more, one, two more steps into the court, he probably could have produced a very nice backhand down the line from this. Instead, he was just kind of lifting it and so, sort of like pushing it on over or onto the other side of the net. He misses it. That was not a great game from the GOAT. And it's 2-3 down now. Of course, I'm referring to Monfils with, as GOAT because of our resident fan, Kren Boogie, in the chat. Um, the scores of the screen a bit. Unfortunately, that's John. So I can't help you with that. I'm watching who be struggling against RBA, says Ghosty, but it's back to two games all now. I cannot help you with the scoreboard because it's not from me. It's from John's computer. So I can text him, but um, yeah, I don't know how early he's going to be able, you know, how quickly he's going to be able to come anyway. So I think we might have to stay like this unless maybe I can do something with the formatting, but I don't know if that's going to help because that's like a, you know, it's a, it's a different issue. <laughs> I'm trying different layouts now. I don't think either of them is really going to change much, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's just how he... Um, what sort of screen grab he went for, what sort of mode, I guess. Yeah, I can't I can't do anything about it, really. Um, Monfils must be one of the quickest, even at his current age, says Sean, which, of course, is absolutely true. I think if we put him against Alex de Minor right now, he would not be close to him. Probably as he aged, there's like a lot more anticipation in the footwork that he has rather than proper proper speed but yeah he still has these first two three five meters and still that insane ability of like looking you know completely drained and still running like crazy which is um well somewhat impressive for sure i mean i remember talking about this in Estoril with some of the other journalists that like you know monfis monfis uh, someone said that monfis got uh, really tired in the end at that five all game and I'm like, man, he was tired from the beginning of the third set at least. You know, he was already barely standing. But of course, then he's still running like a bunny rabbit, energizer bunny or whatever. Um, anyway, um, that's quite a great point from Medvedev again. That inside out forehand landing just on the line and then the follow up with the forehand drop shot. Such, well, su such a great disguise too on it. Maybe the, the match is sort of firing up now because now it's Monfils producing a very good combination, getting Daniel on the stretch and following it up into the net. I remember that last match that Monfils played in Monte Carlo in 2016 against Nadal. 
and there he was just like he was just unleashing on so many shots uh there are not there are a number of crazy hot shots from that match when he just slams his forehand you know uh probably usually out of like defensive positions probably usually countering but i don't know sometimes just himself adding so much crazy pace on it too so far in this match we don't really see it and i think in a way it has allowed medvedev to get a little more comfortable have to also uh, respect the way that daniel has been able to attack on a few points here despite not loving the surface obviously especially in terms of attacking on it but now we're sort of just back to trading neutral backhands monfils slices the ball he gets out of everything here. There's a short ball for Medvedev to attack, though, but it's not good enough. Medved Monfils is still in the point. And then there's just no ability to finish it off when he tries. I think that might be, so far, like the biggest difference, you know, between what he played on these courts eight years ago. And already we have Monfils, you know, just having to take a bit of a breather after a point, uh, which admittedly was very long. But um, if I'm remembering that final against Nadal in 2016, which of course was ages ago, but like that kind of is the big deal so far. Like in that, in that final when he was just defending for 25 shots, then he was able to find his counter. He was able to find his spot to pounce the ball, right? And so far in this match, we haven't really seen that. Like, yeah, he's surviving the rallies. He's withstanding the Medvedev attack. Sometimes, like in this point, it wasn't even Medvedev attacking, just sort of neutral trading with him. But then when he tried to pounce, ooh, that was just a pretty rough attempt. And that's something that, Medved that Monfils will probably need in this match eventually. If Medvedev is just like not making any errors, which so far, I guess he hasn't. Yeah, Monfils going to the net, but that's not going to be good enough. Nowhere near, in fact. That was a bit of a Hail Mary, it seemed. Maybe he was still struggling after the, the previous point as well. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of guess, Sean. <laughs> I know it's not ideal, but um, I'm not sure if we can do much about it, really. Maybe John will be back at some point, you know, to the press office or whatever they have set up there for... Uh, for him in um, Jamor. Uh, Who'll be winning a lot of points and drop shots, says Ghosty. And that's actually kind of interesting. I don't remember him using a lot of them in Estoril. He was definitely crushing his forehand, like compared to what we usually see from Hurkac. It was a very impressive forehand performance. And the same yesterday, actually, against Draper. I feel like the higher bounce of the clay courts, don't tell Nurland because he says that higher bounce conditions, that these are all lies. But um, I feel like the higher bounce of the clay court so far has really suited his uh, Hurkar's forehand. Just doesn't have to produce much on it, just sort of blasts it, you know, top to bottom. And, and um, yeah, it's been looking great so far this clay season. Uh, of course, I'm not watching the match against Roberto Bautista a good today, so I can't really know what's happening in there, but thankfully you have Ghosty keeping an eye on it. Um, also, Alejandro Tabilo against Casper Ruud have already started. Pretty big favorite in that one. Needless to say, is Casper Ruud, but... We will have to see how the match progresses. That's an interesting shorter slice from Monfils too. Against someone like Medvedev, it doesn't exactly put him on the back foot right away. But it was a weird way of losing all the advantage he had after the serve, I suppose. Now he's having Medvedev running all over the court. But kind of to no avail. I mean, Medvedev just getting to everything. And so far, the wall in this match has been Daniel, not Gael. Great angle on the backhand, and it's going to be Monfils throwing out this shot first. 15 all. This is getting increasingly problematic for Monfils, that he doesn't really have a threat. Oh, sorry, 15 30 already. That he doesn't have a threat in his game here. Like, he doesn't really, you know, his, all of his game is about waiting for his, uh, uh, waiting for his opportunity to strike, right? Just defending a few shots and then finding that spot of his own. And so far, he's just not really been able to do that at all. I mean, I don't remember even one maybe like 
very powerful or very dangerous shot from him. Paul Henri Mathieu on our screens, the French Davis Cup captain, of course, a form, former top 20 player of his own as well this century. Took a set of Nadal in a great Juan Garros match. That shot from, shot from Monfils actually giving Daniel some trouble, but he manages to survive and wins the point as well. I mean, Monfils is already looking quite tired physically. I know that that's sort of his thing too. There's probably a bit of acting in it sometimes as well, or maybe, well, you know, not, not like fully acting, but just sort of showing it to the opponent more than it would need to be. But um, it's not a good sign. And definitely two break points down here. Things aren't looking bright for Gael. Very slow second serve. Gets Daniel on the back foot with the backhand though. Goes to the net, but it's going to be too tough for him to produce this this volley here. Once again, the approach to the net is just so slow and it's very hard for him to get a comfortable volley here. So 5-2 Medvedev after 27 minutes. And this has been a real domination yet again. I mean, I'm not saying that this will continue like this, but for now, Medvedev is not missing off the baseline. Medvedev is the player who's more aggressive, who's able to produce, let's say, better attacking combinations even. Blisters on his left hand, Bautista Agut, apparently. No, I mean, you know, on the on the second on the two-handed backhand, I'm pretty sure it's very important. And apparently they're back in place as ghosty. Kasper Ruth has just broken Alejandro Tabilo. We also have an interesting doubles match here. Bopana Ebden playing Arevalo Pavic. Of course, Bopana Ebden at the top of the ATP rankings now. But so far, Arevalo Pavic are leading. The doubles draw in Monte, Monte Carlo, it has like, you know, moments where it's super stacked. So, for example, you get Bopana Ebden, Arevalo Pavic round two. You get Borelli, Vavasori, Gonzalez, Molteni round two. But at the same time, you have all these singles players, right? Then again, as we know, the singles players can often be better than the doubles players as well. And in fact, Fritz Rune, of course, already in the quarterfinals. I think them and Kachanov Rublev, though, are the only real like singles pairing still left. Although, yeah, I, I guess there's still Serundolo Echeveri playing Greeks for Hurkacz, but that's not going to be... Uh, well, that's later today, basically. I don't know if it's the best idea for Hurkacz really to play doubles here, given he's already probably quite tired, but we'll see. Anyway, 5-2 Medvedev serving for the set. And he'd love to just get a clean game here and a set on the board. Well, another second serve return miss from, Med from Monfils. That's kind of unacceptable by now if he wants to have a good shot in this match. Another one? I mean, that's just, you know, you're kind of joking now. And obviously Monfils is giving him, himself so much time on them too. And yeah, just not making any of them, literally. I think it's a let now for Daniel, so maybe this time he will make his first serve. It hasn't been decided yet. A second serve again, and can he make the return? No. So that's three second serves in this game and three missed returns from Monfils, which, yeah, I mean, obviously that's just impossible to win like this. And another second serve that Medvedev will be able to 
well, we'll have to put in the court. Let's see if Monfils this time has any intent of playing the point. Okay, yeah, we're in the point finally. Path Monfils just sends out this back and long and yeah, this has been a very rough performance from him the last two or three games. Medvedev at the same time just not missing any shot of the baseline. 31 minutes, Daniel Medvedev, the fourth seed, the quarterfinalist from last year, is 6-2 up. I was not expecting this match to be like that. Another drop shot winner for Hubert Kurkacz, says um, Ghosty, although from the score I can see that this is pretty much the only point that he won in that game. 4-2 Rude in the meantime over Alejandro Tabiro. Someone else who kind of might enjoy this opportunity with Alcaraz, you know, falling out. Maybe it's Casper Root. What do you guys think about that? He's not in the section where Alcaraz would have been, but, you know, let's say that um, Novak Djokovic is out of the event. Who would then step up in the top half of the draw? Probably Root, right? Is the main favorite to do it. I mean, Currently in the top half of the draw, in the third round, you've got Djokovic Musetti, Deminor Popperin, Sonego Umber, and then either, well, Hurkac Bautista Agut against Tabilo or Ruud. So, like, Ruud would instantly jump to main favorite to make the final if Djokovic lost to Musetti. So, maybe it's going to be Kasper who just steps up there and is actually going to be the main threat. There's definitely more happening in the bottom half, I would say, with Zverev, Tsitsipas, Kachanov potentially playing Medvedev, Rune against Dimitrov maybe, third round. I mean, we still haven't seen these matches, but maybe. And then Sinner as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so quick today, Sean, that's true. But it's it's possible. I mean, I might just get a 6-1-6-2 for Sinner and a 6-2-6-2 for Medvedev. And, you know, I would be complaining, but I would also like to see some better tennis in these matches, which I guess against Sinner, you know, Sinner Korda, I wasn't able to complain really because at least Sinner was so unbelievable. And uh, here so far, it's kind of the last few games. I mean, mostly Monfils just being unable to keep two, three shots in play in the last game. Not even one shot in play, really, with the missed second serve returns. And again, that's not really a dig at Daniel, who's been really good. But I like this new Vic Viking Hellion, Casper Root, says Ghosty. I like him, too. I, I actually think this event is a very good opportunity for him. If he gets Hurkacz tomorrow, it's likely Hurkacz is going to be pretty tired by then then uh, he potentially plays who Sonego or Umber, right? That's a great opportunity for Kasper. And who knows, maybe this time he would actually have a shot at Djokovic. But yeah, if it's not Djokovic, then he instantly sort of jumps to the main favorite to make the final from the top half of the draw. So. Um, unfortunately, once again, we have some issues for Gael Monfils here. Let me actually miss two points. Let me rewind what happened. Yeah, again, this time he actually did try to go for a huge shot, but just misses it completely. In the second rally, he dumps a backhand into the middle of the net. What the hell is he doing at the moment? And it's yet another error now, 1540. That's horrific. I mean, the first few games were decent, and definitely in that first break, in the first set, you could kind of just say, okay, so Daniela is actually the one who kind of created it. But now it's just Monfils doing, I have no idea what, but having no tactical discipline, having no idea how to break through Medvedev, having no threat in his game either. Now again, he has Medvedev on the back foot and he should finally finish off the point. Yes, he does. That was a nice combination from Monfils. Maybe that will wake him up a little bit more, but he still has one more break point to save. And, you know, the consequences of not doing so could potentially be quite huge. 
but that was finally a nice forehand combination from him. He got a short ball, he pounced on it. That's kind of all we've been asking for, I suppose. And he finds the line on the next serve too. <laughs> Can't just blame Iga yeah, for the quick sets and matches. We can blame Gael Monfils, maybe. Plus one forehand goes out. Monfils, well, playing a bit more like Monfils right now, trying to go for these 200 kilometers an hour winners. But uh, if they're not going in, and it's a second serve too, so... Important moment here as Monfils has to step it up once again. Medvedev looks like he's going to be kind of willing to wait him out, but he does not. He completely shines that forehand. So quality definitely getting quite spotty. We have some, um, you know, the cameraman showing us the wife of Daniel Medvedev and his coach don't look well they don't look interested really <laughs> i guess this match has not been that great yet but we'll see and again it's medvedev here just taking a very very passive approach about it on the next point but still making errors despite standing so far back despite giving himself so much time so I guess he's kind of been put to sleep by the rough patch of Monfils the last few games. And once he actually had the chance to take a set and a break lead, he actually couldn't convert it. And it's going to be the first game for Monfils. So let's see if he's able to sort of, yeah, just take any big momentum from that and actually manage to turn it into something. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it just kind of feels like Medvedev was just hoping that um, Monfils was going to gift him yet another game. But he didn't. Fifteen unforced errors in the first set for Kahal Monfils, by the way. Eight games, yeah. Tough to win like this, for sure. Let's see. Um, let's see if it costs Medvedev that he kind of didn't stamp his foot on the gas pedal the last game. Because the, the set and a break lead was there. And he just kind of went even more passive about it. Probably... Um, yeah, probably he just thought that it was going to happen for him after the last few games, right? That if he just allows Monfils that opportunity to make errors, he probably will get them. But yeah, I mean, he didn't. So now is when we see if that pattern continues or if Monfils is just going to be back to his old tricks, I suppose. Old tricks in the sense of that match, not his career. Very nice volley here from Medvedev, though. Monfils speeding towards the bench, almost hits the ball kid, but obviously even if he did, that wouldn't have been anything because he was, well, trying to get to that volley. Which he was unable to. Stepping up a little bit more here, Medvedev, and going for this backhand down the line. It clips the net, not the cleanest, but it does the trick anyway for the love up. And Ruth also took the first set 6-2. I think also like Medvedev after 31 minutes, if memory serves right. It's another cheap error from Monfils. <clears throat> While well, in the meantime, Ghosty is probably still following Kurkac Bautista Agut, which is in the ninth game of the second set. A ninth game that looks like it could be quite crucial given its deuce. And if Kurkac would break, he would serve for the match.
Oh my goodness, yet another missed second self return from Monfils, and that's, yeah, that's just not good enough, I mean, what the hell is he doing here? Because that wasn't even missed, like, that was middle of the net, straight up. So anyway, 6-2-1 game all. Monfils did not threaten the Medvedev serve. Let's see if Daniel can keep pressuring his. I mean, if, if Monfils is going to keep missing shots like this, yeah, probably. Guy really speeding things up as well, like in the sense that between his first and second serves, he's taking less time than usual. He's kind of agitated and, well, once again, he misses his backhand here, like a complete shank. Yeah, that's been a rough match for him. I'm a little surprised because it feels like there's, you know, even if he loses, it's kind of been a while since he looks like this of course he still hasn't lost the match he's still very much in the second set but the quality of play just has not been high he's both making a lot of unforced errors but at the same time just not really threatening to end points either with his shots and i guess seeing that we kind of can't play medvedev for what he did in the first game of the second set where he just was hoping for even more errors from Gael because they keep coming. And once again, I mean, what the hell is that? There's no footwork, there's no intensity. He just dumps his backhand into the middle of the net out of nowhere, completely messes up the preparation for the stroke. That's quite weird. Big serve here. Should be able to clean up this point. Yes, he does. A block return like this on clay is usually a death sentence. And this time, when he was given such a short ball, Monfils is able to capitalize. So at least, you know, at least he's not in that sort of state. Plays a forehand slice here, lures Medvedev a bit forward. After that, you kind of have to punish him, though, which I think he will eventually. Yes, he does. A couple of bigger forehands here. That was a pretty nice play. Uh, forehand slice, pretty short forces Medvedev into a tricky position on the court and just slams a couple of forehands here. Neither of them that easy, but... Now he manages to get it done, yes. And again, he has Medvedev on the back foot, goes to the net. I don't think Daniel is going to be able to win this point. He still makes Medvedev play two more volley, well, one more volley, but uh, it was never going to be enough to really put any pressure on Gael. So once again, it seems like Monfils might recover out of this game. Similarly to that one in the, uh, in the, in the first game of the second set, you know, 15-40, and it seems like he might actually fight his way through to yet another one, but we'll see. First, he needs to convert this game point. Sets up a ball for Medvedev to attack. And even though Daniel, of course, with his forehand technique, maybe he's not going to be that comfortable blasting through this for a ball like this, it's still good enough to get an error out of Monfils. The depth was missing from Gauss hitting in this rally. And he misses another neutral ground stroke, just a backhand cross that he, well, if, if he's just pushing them on the other side of the net, he's mostly landing them. But whenever he tries to, you know, not go for a line, but like be slightly more aggressive even, that already raises his error count tremendously, really. 
One more breakpoint here. No first serve this time either. So this is a proper opportunity for Medvedev. I think he had a similar one in the first game of the first, second set and he like completely missed it. But let's see now as we are in a rally. Monfils has this nice opportunity here to go inside out, but I think going inside uh, inside in, sorry, but going inside out probably gives him the point anyway. Yes, it does. So it's going to be one more break point for uh, saved for Gael Monfils. Daniel tries to check the mark, but Leani shows him that it's actually pretty far wide. And again, Monfils continues to be pretty clutch on the breakpoints, despite making some pretty ridiculous errors in any other rally. Maybe he will survive yet another very tough game. Second serve a deuce. It's not like Medvedev is going to crush his second serve return, but that usually means we're going to be neutral in the point anyway. And most of these, of course, Monfils is, has been losing, but not this time. And uh, he might just survive. I mean, this has been a real survival effort. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if of the fittest because, well, it's probably Medvedev who's the, who's the fitter player, but... Some talk to his box now while Medvedev is changing his racket, his grip, maybe even. Now Monfils talking to Diani. I hope he's not asking about Medvedev, you know, being able to do that on return because, well, it's Monfils who's like delaying the play, constant delaying play constantly. But oh, anyway, game point up, serve down the tee. And should be an easy put away. Yes, it is. So 2-1 on Monfils. I think already six breakpoints saved in the set as he's really extending this match for us. No, no, Terry, it was a joke, I think, about the scoreboard from Sean. But yeah, Medvedev 6-2 in the first set. Can you get John to make a drop shot winner graphic for clay season? Probably, I mean, I don't know how it would look and I don't know what sort of skills it would require from John, who I know is, you know, decent at it, but probably not a pro yet. Uh, 15 seconds UTS. I think the, the good system is actually 15 seconds um, that we, we're going to have it in doubles from Madrid going onwards, but also we had it at the next gen finals where if it's an ace, unreturned serve or a double fault, that's when you uh, just get 15 seconds between the points. I think that's okay. That would speed up the game a little bit. Did players before Djokovic and Nadal drag out the time between points in the same way? I don't think so. I think, you know, in the past, tennis was just way less physical. So players didn't really need to do that. Whereas, of course, for Djokovic and Nadal, they kind of started a new era of tennis in a way, in what sort of rallies they were playing between one another. And after them, they would very often take like 40 seconds. Then we, of course, brought in rules against that, which weren't really, um, you know, used by the umpires <laughs> too much. Uh, then we actually brought in rules, which I kind of didn't even give the umpires any real sense of judgment and just were sort of very strict. Then we got away from them. And yeah, it's been a whole big mess. But I think Djokovic and Nadal kind of got us to this point. Then again, it's probably also the style of tennis that they're playing. Flat 15, Ghosty, is pretty much impossible, I think, because how are you going to get to the towel, for example? 
especially on the bigger courts, you're just not going to be able to get your to your towel unless you want to like maybe um, combine it with the ball kids coming back and that they would be also giving towels to players, which I think was a pretty good actually COVID change that we got because there's there's really no point in, you know to do that unless we want to save time and unless that's part of your idea. But I think going to the towel, uh, you're not going to get to the towel. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with the ace and return serve or double fault because that's the point after which you don't need to get to your towel. But after, you know, sometimes you should be able to do that. I mean, it also improves the quality of play if your hands aren't sweaty, if your racket isn't, if you can grip it well. Very long rally here. Monfils is not even going to go to that next ball. No, actually, Layani is going to be shanking the mark here. That seemed into me, but... Yeah, of course it is. So what's happening here? Has this been called out or has Medvedev called it out? Because that seemed clearly into me, but we'll see. I mean, quality of play and clay, is there really a correlation? Depends on your preferences, but... I don't think we can really say something like so 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 yeah clay is gets worse matches because it's slower because it's more physical i don't really think so i mean it's kind of just your personal preference to me that's leading you the other way Medvedev is really irritated by now with this line umpire as Layani goes to check the mark yet again. And this time the umpire was right. However, well, sorry, the umpire was wrong in that, you know, he didn't call out. But Medvedev is really angry at him. Layani is like kind of stopping him from going to that line umpire. And it seems like he was successful, but, you know, he still says something to him. But yeah, I mean, this one was out, 40-15 for Medvedev. That, that previous point, indeed, he lost because he stopped play and then uh, it turned out that the ball was actually in. So a lot of frustration in this game for Medvedev, a lot of frustration that he really doesn't need at the moment either because, of course, he's still in a pretty good position in this match. Tries to go to the net, but Monfils firing this massive backhand pass right at Daniil who can't quite cover it with the forehand volley. Still one more game point, though. And let's remember that in this set, Monfils has already saved a billion breakpoints. By a billion, I pretty much mean six, I think. But still. Monfils, uh, sorry, Hurkac and Bautista got into the second set tie break. Let's see if Medvedev can clinch this game without going into deuces and all the mess that can come from them. Well, double fault now. So all that irritation or that all that anger that he's been displaying in this game maybe is coming back to bite him. Third double fault of the match. Not too many games either, but this one is definitely quite crucial. I think one of them earlier was at 40 love, so didn't matter. But this one actually can put him in a tough position if he continues to just throw away points. At Deuce, though, he lands his second serve. Barely gets that forehand in. That was not a clean shot at all. And Monfis actually gets him to miss. So it's going to be a break point for Gael now. I mean, it was seemingly just going into a very easy win for Daniel, but 
right now Monfis converts it and who knows this is the first breakpoint opportunity of the match for Gael Medvedev made a mess of this second set and is he able to take it or is it just going to be just more chaos that he kind of brought upon himself let's see Monfi slicing the ball back here once again, inviting Medvedev to attack, and it's just too short. Sits up for Medvedev in the court, and then he was able to curl it into the court. This was, I guess, a pretty decent idea, this short slice, the semi-invitation to attack, but Medvedev took it very well. Monfis also trying to yeah because he sort of tried to make a very quick change of direction and his left foot seems to be ailing a little bit but you know he's back at it we're back to deuce but yeah it does feel like a lot of the issues that medvedev is having right now he definitely brought it upon himself and sort of as i'm talking about it he hits another double fault which is just a continuation of this trend in the second set of course the worst part of it being that he couldn't capitalize on the six breakpoints across the first two service games of Monfils yet another chance for Gael now to go free one up and basically lead for the first time in this match barely gets the return in play but Medvedev is not able to do much about it and now this is one of the most crucial points of the match so far, probably. Not getting too much penetration on his shots, Monfils, uh, Medvedev, sorry, but he's defending pretty well. Yet again, he survives despite his ball barely clearing the net. Nice forehand down the line. Drop shot invites Monfils in. And Gael plays a pretty good backhand slice. Medvedev tries to make a very quick decision whether he should pass him with a drive, whether he should lob him, whether he should wait for it to bounce. I think he chose right to do something with it right away, but it was such a tough, like such a tough shot to make. And he actually misses it. So it's 3-1 Monfils now. That's a very surprising turnaround given how the first two service games of Gael in this match in this second set looked suddenly Monfils despite seemingly not playing all that much better he's free one up in the second set you know at least he stopped missing the routine shots for the most part he's already won so many 1540s and 4015s in this set as well right I mean two break two two holds from 1540 down and now a break from 1540 down but let's see if he can just keep going like this, or maybe he will just lose again, um, lose the plot again, maybe I should say. 5-2 up in the second set, Hurkac. So he's very close to securing that third round, which would be, a, well, basically a repeat from Monte Carlo last year when he beat Jere, Draper, and then lost to Sinner, having a match point. This time he would play Rune potentially, in the, sorry, Rune Root potentially in the third round. Once again, a lot of slices from Monfils. At least now he's making Medvedev a little bit more uncomfortable than he was in the early goings of this match. But Daniel again with this backhand down the line, that's kind of a rarity for him to go at, after this shot like that. Of course, he's done it only twice or thrice maybe in this match, but that was awesome. This just looks like another one of these matches right now where Monfils is that kind of a lot worse than the opponent, but he just starts throwing junk shots in. He just starts making it even more tricky for the opponent. One of the more famous ones, of course, is the 2016 US Open semifinal against Djokovic, where like everyone was thinking, okay, so maybe Monfils can actually do it here because he was playing so well on the way to that match. But then he actually gets outplayed and sort of low five down. He starts throwing in junk and actually winning points like that, you know, actually having a shot whenever he was playing like the more unconventional strategies and just not playing the not playing tennis anymore. 
it's kind of the same thing here. And he manages to get the point done with the back and drop shot. As like the, the weirder the shots are from Monfils, the, the more damage sort of he's inducing to, to Medvedev. Nice combo here of this loopy backhand. Monfils, Medvedev trying to step around his forehand for whatever reason. I mean, step around his backhand for whatever reason. And Monfils instantly there sort of seeing that and punishing it with the dropper. Tani just didn't do enough with his shot to justify the change of positioning there and left that one corner of the court pretty much open. Forehand slice from Monfils now, again, just throwing a bit of a junk ball. Slowing things down, slowing things down, forcing Medvedev to generate pace, forcing Medvedev to hit through the ball. And now he's not missing. Now he's not really missing any shots of the baseline. And it's going to be Medvedev cracking first. Can Monfils just have the tactical discipline to keep pulling this off? I mean, we'll see. It definitely takes quite a lot of, I would say, strict idea for uh, for the match in order to keep going like this and potentially win. We'll see if he has it. It's still fairly all and nice. What a plus on forehand here. That's the hammer. That's what we've been waiting for from Gael. Average forehand topspin speed for Monfils has gone up 14 kilometers in the second set. And, you know, he's still pushing a lot of his shots in, on the defense, but like now he's actually also sometimes pouncing on them. Of course, yeah, as I said, for him, it's kind of like it should be a mix for him, right? But now with all the junk bowling as well, he's just really making Medvedev quite uncomfortable. And somehow he is in this match and somehow he's also 4-1 up in the second set. Maybe this one is not even that poor anymore. Oh, and we have some changes on the screen, I guess. So we will get probably a more, um, let's say, better placed scoreboard on the screen. Hubert Hurkacz and Kasper Rud, they might play, they might play in a second if Rud is able to beat Hubert Hur uh, Alejandro Tabilo. Of course, that was kind of the Estoril final that we were expecting on Saturday when they were playing the semis. Kasper losing in the second match to Pedro Martinez. Hubert Hurkacz in the meantime, of course, winning his match against Roberto Bautista Agut. That head-to-head, -head, by the way, used to be free. Zero for um, Bautista Agut. Now it's free all between them. So it seems like Hurkacz has kind of regained the break. I mean, sweatband is, is a sweatband really going to be able to absorb the sweat on your hand? Not really, right? Sure, it might help you with whatever, your forehead or something like that, but it's not going to absorb the sweat that is generated on your, literally on your palm. And I think that's the main issue. Personally, and I, I rarely use the towel in either tennis or table tennis really but well actually yesterday when i was at my practice it was like so warm in the playing hall so i was actually using it quite a lot but definitely not as not as often as some other players which yeah kind of make a routine out of it i can't deny that yeah <laughs> Yeah, it goes to you some good suggestions in case John wants to lose his credibility and accreditation. Maybe next year we're going to see Daniel Medvedev in Estoril, depending on the um, date of the event. Unless it's a challenger, then we're probably not going to see Daniel Medvedev in Estoril. Even he's still going to be in the top 10 and unable to enter. 
Nice backing down the line from Monfils. And yeah, I mean, now he's suddenly do the dominant player. I was monitoring John's drinking, apparently. I was just, you know, giving the uh, charts to Dr. Vansh, basically. And Dr. Vansh will, will come up with a, diagno with a diagnosis soon. Um, anyway. Let's see if Monfils can just keep bouncing on Medvedev now and suddenly take this set 6-1 maybe even because that's where we are heading right now if Medvedev doesn't suddenly wake up. He's really being forced to generate that pace now. What a nice angle from him. And a very optimistic idea by Monfils to just go on the outside of the ball here and crash it cross court. Love that angle from Daniel though. Really forced Gael into that position where he needed to make a choice of sorts. And he definitely chose wrong, but you know, gotta ask some questions at least. That's too big on the plus one backhand for Medvedev two. The return dropping short. And he's able to capitalize for 30-15. This is, of course, a real possibility for Monfils now to take the second set, and he will be disappointed not to go to the decider here because, well, he really woke up, he really rose from the ashes. And now it's just a question of if the Phoenix will fly or will he burn down again. Medvedev once again on the attack. Monfils getting to a couple of slices here, though. And I think he actually won the point. Did he? No? No, Medvedev catches the line of the smash. That would have been incredible, but... Yeah. The smash from Daniil, the second one, catches the line. So it is a point for the Russian who has another chance to secure a game. I mean, so far in this set, I think he's lost three games from 15-40 or 40-15, either on return or on serve. And I believe he's lost all of them, so... Nice back and return smacked by Monfils. It's like a completely ver different version of Gal we're seeing now, because, yeah, he's both disciplined, but also has a threat again in his game, which was really missing. If if, Monf if Medvedev just drops the ball short to him, you know, or, or maybe if he just lets him be comfortable in the rally, it's likely Monfis at some point will take advantage. Whereas in the first set, it just wasn't looking like that at all. 4-2 now. And let's see if Monfis can keep going. Just two more holds and he's in the, into the third set in his first... Monte Carlo appearance since 2024. Of course, he also played the first round against Alexander Vukic here. But in his first appearance in terms of an event. In terms of the, you know, day, day event, in terms of the, this tournament as a whole. Yesterday, Monfils barely beat Vukic, actually. From 1-4 down in the third set, he broke back twice. The fight is there now, now at least, definitely. Backhand cross opens up the court for himself and clinches it at the net. Very nice soft backhand volley. Medvedev unable to catch up to it. That loopy forehand, now the backhand slice pretty sh dropping pretty short again and i mean yeah i mean that the idea was right sure again he's like kind of using the 
short slice or some even some junk kind of reasonably and you know with good awareness missed the final shot but it was a nice point 16 backhand unforced errors from from Monfils already in this match Medvedev had just four once again a couple of shorter slices for Monfils and he misses that one yeah that's just an example of junk bowling gone wrong in the sense that you know you have to you can't miss balls if you're playing like this right like if you're just throwing them into the court you can't really give any of them to your opponent these have to be like completely risk-free shots and for Monfils today they kind of haven't been but the last five ten minutes He's definitely been better also at that. 15.30 now, and he misses this forehand. Takes a lot of discipline from him to play this way, and this game it's kind of all falling apart again. But if he holds again from 15.40, I mean, that just might be the death sentence in this set for Daniel then, because how on earth is he going to recover from that? So far, this set, Monfils has been very clutch of breakpoints. He'll need that clutch factor to be high again, as it is after a second serve. He's directing the ball around the court, but not much coming out of it so far. Medvedev defending well. And it's going to be Monfils cracking first. It's again one of these rallies where like both of them are just slowing down play as much possible, as much as possible. But um, once again, I mean, this is just a style of play where Monfils can't miss balls, you know, where you can't miss regulation shots. And that's not exactly what he's been doing in this match. 41 minutes and 4-3, just seven games played, but it's back on serve. Kasper Root, 6-2, 4-3 up, still a break up in the second set, very close to securing that match with Hubert Hurkacz, which we almost got in the Estoril final, you know, the Estoril final that never came to be. Now Vansh does not have a PhD. Um, we're just laughing about Dr. Vansh because uh, John has been telling me that um, Vansh is very interested in his drinking. Um, not in Vansh's drinking, in John's drinking. And he's like sort of, yeah, taking a pretty, um, let's say, worried response to it in that, you know, he's just sort of asking John, you know, aren't you drinking too much and stuff? And John basically calls Vansh his doctor. That's what I'm trying to say. And when it comes to uh, the third or fourth time I've said junk bowling, I mean, why not? It is junk bowling and it's a proper tennis term. You have to slow it down on clay, a big reason why it's my least favorite surface. I mean, technically you don't need to, but like here we're definitely watching players who, you know, love that sort of play, right? Monfils has kind of built his career about around it. Medvedev, depending on the courts, but also interested in just drinking. Yeah, yeah, precisely. I mean, he's just sort of like just um, trying to make sure that John doesn't drift into alcoholism. Let's say that. But uh, John actually explained it to me in Estoril uh, pretty well, you know, that there's a difference between heavy drinkers and alcoholics. So, you know, as long as, as long as, um, let's say you probably don't um, miss out on any other duties, I think that's fine. <laughs> sort of as long as alcohol doesn't ruin your relationships, your, your job, I think you're probably not an alcoholic or like your dependency on it isn't high. Anyway, that's probably a topic for another day, but basically that's why we've been calling Vansh Dr. Vansh. <laughs> uh, 
Vanch MD. <laughs> it's a it's a spin off of House MD, where Vanch is the main character, and um, he does not have a cane because that would not allow him to play tennis. He actually is a tennis playing doctor. And in this uh, in this room where they perform the diagnoses, uh, there's just a tennis. You know, there, there's a couple of screens, and there's always tennis on it. And all the people in the Vansh MD team just have to constantly say, "Wait, I mean, can you can you listen to us finally? Um, we're not invested in Medvedev hitting this beautiful volley to go 30, 15 up. We're just we want to actually diagnose the patient." And a lot of the diseases on that show also have some relevance, like, you know, they, they also connect to tennis somehow, like Vansh MD has to treat tennis elbow, or that's kind of the only disease that I know connected to tennis. Or like someone gets hit by a ball on a tennis court and they get into Dr. Vansh, to Vansh MD. Uh, anyway. It's a nice counter from Monfis here. This is precisely what I was talking about earlier, in that once he waits out his opponent, he has to have that ability to pounce. And the last few games, it's been there. Ooh, was trying to go for this backhand line here, but just misses it. Gets his shirt into into his mouth. You know, just really disappointed with this. He's like, oh, very very close. Could have been a could have been such a key shot for the entire set as well. And let's see if Medvedev can clinch the game. Wow, going for that drive volley there. That's pretty insane. But, you know, he manages to make it work. And it's four games all now. So we are really arriving into the crucial sections of this second set. One slip up from either player. And we might either be going to a decider or we might either be going on or we also might be going home. I don't actually remember from where John is, but, um, well, UK, England. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. <laughs> um, I consider pushing a tennis disease. Yeah, that's funny, actually. We could also find a lot of tennis illnesses sort of related to the style of play, yeah. I guess there are a lot of injuries as well you can get on the court, so maybe that would be the Vansh MD, um, sort of like main area of expertise. Does Monfils land this plus one forehand? I think he does. To be fair, having to live full-time with a woman is probably the best reason to take up drinking. Ooh. Ooh. Or sometimes it's the other way around, you know? You stop living full-time with a woman, and that's when you take up drinking. But, you know, I have to admit, in Estoril, I, I did have quite a few beers myself, too. It's kind of impossible when John is around not to do that. Especially when we were invited by this one guy from the tournament, I guess, to the nearby city. And it turned out that he was buying the drinks. So, obviously, we had to take advantage. But these stories you might hear, you know, some other day. There's a good one about the chicken joint, but... It's too long for a stream, I think. Anyway, got one piece, uh, Daniel Medvedev. On piece was fairly low up here, but he misses this easy forehand. 35 unforced errors already from him in this match. 15 from Medvedev. And once again, cheap forehand error into the net. And this match actually is kind of precisely what I've been talking about um, the last couple of years on these streams, that Monfils, in the course of his career, he's like never really found his identity on the court, I guess. You know, he's always had struggles like balancing out his game, knowing when to attack, when to defend, when to wait for the error, when to like sort of, yeah, just hardcore grind. And um, this match is actually kind of presenting it nicely, right? I mean... Just the fact that ever since the start, he's like kind of up and down, can't really find a clear game plan. 
then when he does, he's like not really strict around it, not too disciplined. He starts making just some random regulation errors too. So it's, it's an interesting match, definitely. That's in a way also reminding me of a lot of patterns from Gao's career. Uh, I was even mentioning that US Open semifinal with Novak. Um, anyway, there was a 40 30 here for Monfils, which he was pretty lucky to get to because the net court just completely killed the point. But the next shot, he just tries to clinch the game, clinch the game with a massive forehand. Medvedev tracks it down and gets the error. Now Monfils approaching the net, but wow, that's nice. Really good anticipation at the net there from Gal. He's laughing to his team, I guess, about it. But uh, it seemed that Medvedev might have quite a lot of time to produce the pass here, but Gal just guesses well. And puts it away with the left hand too. Left-handed volley finish for, for Monfils here. Well, certainly in the in the second set, we can sort of stop complaining about the entertainment value, even if still a lot of rallies look like, well, both guys just are determined to slow it down as, mo as, as much as possible. And I guess we're coming into another one where like Monfi slammed one ball and now we're just back to playing the safest shots possible. And obviously in this one, it's Monfils who cracks first. I mean, this has been the entire match, right, for him. Um, he tries to slow it down, but then doesn't actually have the, I don't even know what, like the consistency to pack it up. The forehand drop shot, but it's really long actually. And it should be a point for Medvedev. Yes, indeed. And we have our first virtual match point, maybe. Second serve two, he gets it into the court. That's already a start but then doesn't want to attack the first ball forehand and he misses another one trying to run around kind of pushing it again like not really hitting through the ball and it's going to be Medvedev serving for the match this has been a very weird one but hello Nurlan uh, Eid Mubarak right is it um, as well I'm not celebrating but um, to anyone celebrating sure Vansh is to the best of my knowledge, not getting married, at least not yet. <laughs> Come, Nori. But to be honest, I mean, Gael Monfils is, is willing to play these rallies, right? I mean, he's always been playing these long looper rallies. Like, that's not just clay. <laughs> he's willing to play them on any court, I think, so... I think you're you're a little harsh on clay. Let's say that ghost. It's not probably not my favorite surface either, but I'm also not as um, harsh on it as you. <coughs> Sorry, Alejandro Tabilo in the meantime broke back in the second set, so maybe that match still has something in it. Root uh, Tabilo is what I'm referring to. But basically, let's see if he manages to clinch it. Daniel Medvedev.
That's a fun point already. A Medvedev lobbing Monfils, who tracks it down, but then again, just a pretty random error. Mirror count for Monfils is obviously over 40 by now. And uh, in a match that has only contained 18 games, that is pretty rough. Nice one for Medvedev, just cracking on the plus one forehand, going to the net. Very nice finish across it. Two points away from the match now. And now another missed second serve return. So three match points now for Daniel. And uh, well, I'm just gonna maybe leave what I what I was about to say for the end of the match. Actually, 87 minutes. And yet another unforced error from Monfils takes, um, ends the match. 6-2, 6-4, Daniel Medvedev into the third round in Monte Carlo. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? Uh, Monfils, of course, going 4-1 up in the second set, uh, despite being such an error machine, like that was pretty huge. But um, for a while, he had like something there, right? I mean, he was throwing in these short slices, junk balls, uh, really getting Medvedev to generate all the pace. Um, but um, he just kind of like never had any discipline or consistency to to capitalize on this, like like keep going for it, right? To keep going for this strategy and keep pulling it off, and then he loses five games in a row. So that the the better player went through. I mean, I think we can be clear about that. It could have been much easier, especially if he takes all these breakpoints at the beginning of the second set. But eventually, he still won the match. So I guess it's like you know. Not a big deal for him. And uh, yeah, all in all, I mean, uh, Medvedev is going to play Karen, Karen Hachanov in the third in the third round. Let me see if they ever played on clay. I actually am not sure. I think there was one match, maybe one year or two. No, maybe not. Yeah, actually, no. Yeah, Medvedev leads 5-1, but they've never played on clay. So it's definitely a match that, Kar that Karen can win, I think, on clay courts. But it's also a solid enough start for Medvedev that he might have a shot. Um, disappointed from Monfils, um, says Terry. Yeah, sure. I mean, he was just an error machine today. Definitely not a good performance. Uh, for a moment, he had something going for him, but then blew it once again. So not much you can do if you're hitting 40 unforced errors in 22 games, in 18 games, I think. So I guess that's really the end of the story for this match. And um, I wanted to thank you guys for this stream, also for the earlier one with James for Corda Siner. Hopefully we're going to see each other on some much better Monte Carlo matches. At the same time, Kasper Ruth also clinches his win against Alejandro Tabilo. He's going to play Hubert Hurkacz tomorrow. And just two more matches in Monte Carlo coming up today in singles. Uh, Holger Rune against Sumit Nagal and Miomir Kecmanovic against Grigor Dimitrov. Hopefully some better action tomorrow, especially Musetti Djokovic, I think looks super tasty. But pretty much any match tomorrow will be very exciting. So Zverev Tsitsipas as well, Medvedev uh, Hachanov, Demir Popirin. Uh, lots of good stuff tomorrow coming up. Rune Dimitrov, maybe even potentially if they both win today. So once again, thank you guys. And yeah, that was that was quite a rough show, but uh, we um, still had to sort of see for ourselves how this was going to turn out. And of course, the second set provided quite a lot of momentum changes and um, turnaround and a turnaround. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys around.